and welcome to Logistic Talks. My name is Eric Gantier. I'm the president of the global sector of engineering and manufacturing. And today I am in Chicago in our innovation center where we spearhead the future of logistics. I will be joined by Chris Bush. He is the vice president of United Cargo for the Americas. I guess we're going to talk about air freight. So let's see what he has to say. My name is Chris Bush. I am the Vice President of United Cargo, Managing Director, United Airlines. Well, Chris, first of all, thank you very much for joining our logistic talks. It's a pleasure to have you uh, with us this morning and to have United joining our series of uh, videos. So let me start with asking you a few questions. The first one, tell me, how this um, pandemic has impacted the airline industry in terms of capacity, in terms of prices? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say it hasn't impacted us at all, but I uh, haven't woken up from that bad dream. But uh, if we think about the, the schedule that United Airlines had pre-pandemic, we were roughly one, over 100 wide-body international departures per day. Overnight, we went to six. That is a huge reduction in the amount of capacity that we had for uh, passengers as well as cargo. And you can just uh, understand what that does to the supply chain. When you have that much capacity reduced, demand was still there. Uh, so just basics of supply and demand, it really put a, a major hurt on the industry. Uh, and that's something that United really focused on at the start is we want to say, how can we continue to support our customers as well as the global supply chain? Uh, and what we did at United is we decided to implement what we call freight only flights. Uh, and this is a passenger aircraft that we are flying without passengers. We we're just filling the, uh, the belly with cargo. Uh, it's, it's not a new concept, but it wasn't something that we really had done before. Uh, and to, to date, We've now operated over 14,000 of these flights, uh, doing our part, partnering with our customers to make sure we could keep the supply chain moving. Excellent. You mentioned earlier about these flights with uh, Belly uh, Cargo only. Mm -hmm. um, have you um, done at uh, United anything else to, uh, to give solutions on this capacity restraint? Uh, yeah, so we, we've also partnered with uh, operators that own freighters. Uh, United Airlines, we don't have any full freighter aircraft. And we really don't have plans to go fully into the freighter world uh, with purchasing freighters, but we do want capacity. We want access to the uh, capacity on freighters. And that's what we've done. Uh, we partner with a lot of uh, different freighter operators that will uh, provide us capacity, whether it's with block space agreements or just interline agreements that we have. Thank you. I wanted to ask you something different. We see at DHL a shift from um, air freight into ocean freight. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the demand on air freight is going to decrease when the market stabilizes again? Uh, I do believe it will, uh, but the, the crystal ball question is when? And that's the part that nobody knows. Uh, we're still seeing a tremendous demand that you can really tell by the size of the booking, uh, not necessarily commodity, because uh, most commodities, they, might, they may go on ocean or air, but the size of the booking requests that we're seeing still indicate that there is congestion uh, on the ocean or the ports, whatever it may be, that's driving uh, this freight to, to air. Uh, so we do believe it's going to stabilize over time, but it's just that, you know, that million dollar question of when is it going to actually uh, stabilize. Chris, as a, a manager of uh, cargo at United, let me ask you this, because I would like you to give some advices, if possible, uh, to our customers. We see a lot of um, uh, shippers wondering what they should do and how sh they, should, they could buy best air freight over this, um, this period of time. Should they go for spot rates? Which should they go for validity rates? Which should they go for capacity only? What would be your advice? Uh, a, a big part of that, I think, is to partner with a forwarder that has great relationships with the airlines. I think it's key to pick the right forwarder in times like this that has access to a lot of capacity. Uh, in terms of, of spots or long term, I think it depends on the market and really where we've seen capacity grow. If, if you look at from where we were two years ago, transatlantic is trending about the same, if not more, in terms of available seat miles is how we measure. But capacity overall, transatlantic has increased. Transpacific now, that's a totally different story. And, and the, the capacity is just not there yet from, a, uh, from the passenger airlines. There, there's freight operators flying, but uh, the passenger airlines haven't fully increased their schedules to, to Asia. Uh, so, so that market you're going to look at differently uh, mm -hmm. than the transatlantic market uh, and really partner to find out what is, what is the best. So it's, 
I can't say exactly what to do, uh, but I, I would definitely focus on the areas where the capacity is growing and, and how you can take advantage of that. Thank you, Chris, for this advice. Um, how do you at uh, United Airline look at shippers who would like customers who would like to talk directly to, uh, to the airlines? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very uh, interesting question, right? I think it's, it depends on what the intent is. If the intent is to cut anyone out of the process or try to find uh, cheaper rates, things like that, then I, then I don't think it's the right intent. If the intent is to strengthen the partnership and improve the overall service, I think it's a fantastic idea. If you can have all the parties in the room together uh, to talk about the pieces that they all should be talking about together, which is the service level, having the shipment from point A to point B as efficiently as possible, then I think it's a great idea. Uh, if, if it starts to bleed into the areas of they're trying to cut one party out or trying to find better rates, I, I don't think that's the Uh, the right way to approach it. And I think that could have more harm than good. Look, you and I, we've seen uh, the business between United uh, Airlines and DHL uh, growing quite yes. a bit lately. How do you explain this uh, success story? Uh, partnership is really what it is. And a lot of it started just prior to the pandemic. Uh, few few meetings that we had, really, the teams saw the benefit of partnering with each other and at, at multiple levels. It's not just someone at this level and this level, or it's it just everyone really gelled really great. And then over the pandemic, we strengthened that relationship because there was, no one knew what was going on. No one knew how long it was going to happen. We were at the point where we were having daily calls, if not someone on my team or myself, many were having calls every single day. Say, like, what are you seeing? What's happening with this? What's, what's uh, going on here? What should we do here? How much capacity do we need here? What flights are going to have? But having that partnership really allowed us to become very efficient in moving the freight and finding the additional opportunities. Uh, and that, that partnership remains today. Uh, so it's one of those things where the pandemic was terrible, but sometimes it really fostered some even stronger relationships. So I, I pull some of the good out of what happened the past couple of years. And I think the development of the re relationship with uh, DHL has been fantastic. And the pandemic helped us really strengthen those bonds. Chris, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to have you uh, with us this morning. And thanks again for these uh, insightful uh, answers you gave us. Thanks oh. again. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm.